was behind the camera. Yeah. All right, there she is. Hi guys, my name is Channing. I'm a senior communication major on campus and I am from Springdale, Arkansas, which is right next door to Fayetteville. So if you have any questions today, please just comment throughout the video and we'll be sure to answer those for you guys. Awesome. All right, so just a little what's what around here. Um, so HOT is uh, closest to the Northwest Quad and Maple Hill communities and the residential areas and the closest dining hall is in the Northwest also across the street, we have the um, Garland Street uh, little shopping area. So there's the bookstore, um, there's Walmart, which is the smallest Walmart in the world that has little groceries, everything you could possibly need. Um, the pharmacy is in there, so if you get sick, you can send all your prescriptions over there. Um, a parking lot, and then over in the Maple Hill communities, we have a Club Red, which is like a gas station without the gas kind of thing. So they got snacks, they're open till midnight. It's great when you're studying really late at night. There's also a Freshens, which just smoothies, and then the Melt Lab, which is a grilled cheese place that you can use your milk in. Um, I'll just show around a little bit. to get into Founders or Maple or wherever else you are. Um, so this is the little front entryway. Behind me is a little gaming station. So some people are playing pool right now. Um, there's also ping pong. And then you can check out all the equipment you need to play these games at the front desk, which we'll see in a little bit. All you have to do is give them your student ID and you can check them out. Um, there's a TV behind there as well. Um, so you can play music off of it. You can watch football, TV, whatever your heart desires. Um, but we'll head back here because behind this is the kitchen. Who's winning? Is it okay? Um, well, we're playing Cutthroat. Oh, I see, I see, it's true. Uh, so this is the HOTS kitchen. Um, every residence hall has a kitchen of some capacity, so this is the one in HOTS. Um, you can also check out pots and pans and dishes and stuff from the front desk with your student ID, so you don't have to bring those. Um, so behind Channing is actually their little convection oven that you can make. Uh, cookies in or whatever. There's a coffee pot. There's a full-size fridge um, Like the sign says just make sure to label everything <laughs> um, if it's yours and then yeah, There's another microwave down here so you can make popcorn lots of drawers and counter space looks like there's some snacks here <laughs> um, So HOTS does a lot of programming and um, anytime there's leftover food It's in the fridge or on the counter. So there's usually snacks around. Well, that's good to know oh, yeah. <laughs> So now we're going to go head to the movie room. Sorry. So HOTS is one of two residence halls on campus that has a theater in their residence hall. Um, this is one of my favorite spaces in HOTS. Um, so there are movie theater seating and there's comfy seating. Um, there are some bean bags over there. You can bring your own pillows or whatever. Um, adjust the lighting for however you need. Um, so definitely a lot of away football games are shown in here. Bachelor nights are really popular in here. Um, Harry Potter movie marathons, Lord of the Ring marathons, um, just kind of anything that's going on. Um, you don't have to necessarily reserve it, but usually people just throw something in a group message. It's like, hey, Harry Potter tonight at 7 p.m. <laughs> um, so what, are you been, what are you binging over the summer? Um, so I actually haven't been watching a lot of TV. No? Um, but Stranger Things season three, yes. I just finished last <laughs> night. Um, not a big Bachelor fan, but I know that's a big summer show, hey, um, and that's always on in here as well. Um, but I heard Euphoria on HBO is really good, so maybe I'll start that. Yeah, I'm not really sure. absolutely. Got options. Yeah. Game of Thrones was huge in here. I know that's over now, but that mm. was a big deal. Then we'll round the corner, um, and then next we'll head into the music room. Um, so Hots is really cool that it has a music room that comes with a little drum set and a uh, piano and the cool thing about it is the only non soundproof area is this area right above the door so if you live above it no worries you won't hear people drumming at 2 in the morning but <laughs> it's completely soundproof um, and you have piano and drum, electric drums actual drums you can bring your own instruments people have left sheet music if you want to start a band I guess you could do that what? Um, a college band <laughs> college band get your roommates <laughs> together 
Um, but yeah, so this is open and available for anyone to use. Um, um, we have what, about uh, 12, 15 people tuned in? Yeah. Heck yeah. That's well, tell, us, uh, tell us where you're from. We're yeah. curious. I'm from Texas. Channing's from Arkansas. Yeah. And then, and then I'm Cecily. I'm here. <laughs> if we have anyone from the West Coast watching. Yeah. All right. Um, so I'm, as I said, my name is Cecily. I'm the CRE of the building, which means the coordinator for residence education. Um, I'm a full-time uh, staff member who lives in the hall. So I live um, in an apartment inside on the first floor. And then um, my job is to supervise the RAs, to provide guidance to residents um, through whether it's programming, one-on-one -on -one interaction, um, help advise our Lead Hogs program. So if we have anyone watching who's thinking about joining Lead Hogs or has already joined, we're super excited. Um, we would love to have you. Uh, it's a great way to get involved in HOTS. Uh, we have a really strong Lead Hogs program. So we can talk a little bit more about that later when we get to the room that we typically meet in. Um, I got my business degree, uh, my undergrad and my master's. So if we have any business students, we can talk business. <laughs> um, so a little bit more about this space. So this is the letters room. This room is used for many, many different purposes because it can be used, um, these walls can collapse. Um, you can turn this into a closed space. Um, you can also open it up so that it's a um, room to hold, hold a program. So we typically have people studying in here during the normal days, but then sometimes in the evenings we'll have, um, like we had a talent show last year, uh, and then we also had a student plan their own program. It was a diversity panel, a really, really cool program called Planting a Seed, and um, the student organized it, and we had a whole, we had like 60 people in this area um, learning about diversity inclusion um, and what that looks like in HOPS. As you can see, there are the big letters, that's why we call it the letters room and um, all people in the building get to sign the letters when you come in um, during the first couple weeks. You'll get to sign them and become a part of that. And then we also, after we sign the letters, we go to the pep rally. That's a huge tradition in HOTS. We get really, really fired up and like to win the spirit competition. So bring your black clothes because we'll probably dress in black um, and be excited. So that's something to participate in when you get here. They usually win too. You, we have to win again. <laughs> Don't tell anyone else our secret. <laughs> I see we have someone from Mama. Yeah. Cool. Hello, Nancy and Stephanie. Thanks for watching. All right, so now we're on the patio. I'm trying not to trip over furniture. <laughs> uh, but this is just a great space to hang out and study, especially on a nice day like today. It's not super hard in Arkansas right now, thankfully. Um, but Michelle will tell us a little bit more about the patio. Yeah, so, hi, everybody. My name is Michelle King. I'm the assistant director of recruitment and path program in the Honors College, so I've probably seen several of you out on the road. You'll probably see me in the fall semester out there recruiting it, bring you all here, but like Darcy said, this is a great place to study and hang out. Um, but it's also a great place for us to have one of our most popular events here in um, Potts Hall, so we do have an event called Professor and Pizza on the Patio. Um, where we do have professors that come over to HOTS once a month to talk about research opportunities as well as study abroad opportunities um, that students will be able to take advantage of. And so um, it's a great place to do this. And then um, amongst um, Professor and Pizza in the Patio, we have several other events that we'll host throughout the school year as well. Um, so we'll have things like dinner with the deans where you actually get to sit down and have a formal dinner with the deans. Uh, we'll have events that are focused just on study abroad and learning more about those opportunities. Um, we'll have our ice cream social that's pretty popular if you like to get some dessert. Um, and our really popular gingerbread house competition, which will happen indoors um, with HOTS, but you'll get to build your teams um, and actually compete to see who can win the gingerbread house competition. So um, those are just some of the things that we'll do around HOTS. And we do have a graduate assistant for programming. Um, her name is Heidi Bugarin, and she'll actually put on a lot of the programs that I'm mentioning to you all. So we'll take a look, go back inside, but these are just some of the things that we here um, on the patio. Yeah, and like the front door, the store is fobbed as well, so you really can't get in without the fob, so it's a lot of another awesome safety feature. Um, it just allows us to know who is in and out of the residence hall. Um, but this area is just another little common space. We have a fireplace, which is really cozy during the winter. Um, and then there's a little free library back there. Um, just take and leave books as you wish. And then back over here is the front desk. So every residence hall has a front desk that usually has an RA on duty or staff on duty. Um, they're there. There's also a 
our call line if you get locked out at three in the morning you can call someone they'll let you in your room you don't have to sleep on the floor it's okay <laughs> um, but yeah so they're always there they're always there to help you this is where you check out your pots and pans or your pool sticks or your ping pong paddles um, yeah. Also, um, usually this is where the mail would be, but all of the mail for this residence hall is in Maple Hill. Um, so your fobs do work over in Maple Hill just so you can get into the mail room over there, but you and your roommate will share a mailbox. You'll get the code emailed to you um, a couple weeks before school starts and you'll just head over there. Um, but if you get a package or something big, it will be held behind the desk so it's not just out for anyone to take and you will sign for it and show an ID for it. Um, so that's a little bit about the mail. Did I miss anything about the front desk? I think really just the lost and found is also here. So if you lose something, um, you'll find, you can always ask the front desk assistant. And then if you lose your keys, though, those are going to go to Maple South. Maple South and HOTS are very connected. You'll get a lot of your paperwork there. You'll get your mail there, things like that. You'll get familiar with it. And it's not, it's like a two second yep. walk. Like, it's it's easy not walk. like you're walking from Kansas City. Um, you can also see that we have the best cleaning staff ever because Miss Lou, who you will meet, she's the best, um, won our Miss Al or the most altruistic ISA member of the year. So just to know, we have the best cleaning staff ever in Hots. <laughs> it's true. Um, so this is another area, the common room, study room. And then behind me, we call it the fishbowl, um, but it's just kind of like a computerless computer lab kind of deal. Um, there's plugs in there, there's a TV you can hook up ports to. Um, a lot of people have meetings in there or just do study groups in there because there is desk space and chairs, and but you can also kind of separate yourself. Again, you can close it off for more privacy, but it is see-through with fishbowl, so you, everyone can see you. If you're in Lead Hog, this is where you'll meet every Monday night from 6 to 7. We'll meet in this room. Um, anyone is welcome. If you decide you want to join late, you can always join. You can join the last meeting of the year if you want, but we'd love to have you. That's where we meet. And then going further down here, this is kind of what we call like the gaming station kind of thing. Um, so we have these like human shaped chairs. Um, they're very ergonomical and they're really comfortable and they're made for gaming. Um, so definitely check this out if you want, <laughs> but um, you can definitely hook up your, lap or your laptops or like Xboxes, GameCubes, whatever gaming device you have. Um, and it also has the touch station on the wall over here. So I love this piece. It's just the state of Arkansas with a bunch of Razorbacks. <laughs> And then behind is another group study room. Um, it's not see-through, so it's not part of the fishbowl, but it just is another study room. Um, yes, so this is one of our RAs. I thought you'd like to meet him. Hi, I'm Elijah, and I'm an RA on the fourth floor, and I'm excited to meet you guys. Awesome. Um, Kurt wants to know, do lead hogs get assistance moving in on August 16th? There's not assistance for them, um, but if you have I'm sure if there's people around, they'd be willing to help you. And Stephanie wants to know, um, are there printers in here? There are not printers in HOTS, but the closest print computer lab where you can print is very close. It's in Quad, um, next to Fulbright Dining Hall. And so it's a quick quick walk right over there, and you can get your stuff printed. Awesome. All right, and then we'll head down this little hallway right here. Uh, so this hallway is home to Cecily's office. So if you ever need anything, this is probably where she'll be hanging out. My office hours are from 9 to 5 typically, but I'm in a million meetings a day or all, you know, in the hall throughout, um, checking on things, helping people. And so if you need something, you can always stop by my office. If I'm not here, you can always email me um, or talk to her and all right. But my door is open. I'm a, I love meeting residents. Yeah. And then the office next to Cecily's is Heidi's, um, which is the GA that Michelle mentioned earlier. Um, so she's kind of the one that's in charge of all the programming. She'll plan everything. She'll probably be the one communicating with y'all. Um, I don't know her office hours, but I'm sure they'll be similar to hers, and I'm sure you can email her with whatever you need as well. Um, yeah, and then behind me is the gym. Um, so the gym you do have 24-hour access to with your FOB, which is what I don't have right now, but I'm getting. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really great. It's not like a huge like workout complex like the Hyper is down the hill, um, but this is at your disposal 24-7. So if you need a study break at 2 in the morning and you're really stressed out, you can go for a run. Um, there's just some equipment. Got a treadmill, got a bench, got an elliptical, got some weights, exercise balls, um, just a couple things. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty great space. Um, if you even just want to do your own exercises, there's some floor space around. Um, it's usually not super packed, um, so I've never waited on a treadmill, but I don't know. It's kind of nice to have, um, especially mm -hmm. when the Hyper down the hill, which is the big facility that has six floors, is closed, and you just kind of want to do yeah. something on your own. It's super convenient. Yes. It's the only residence hall that has gym equipment in the residence hall. 
Um, in Reed, which is an all-female dorm right next door, they just have like a little workout room that's just wood floors like a dance studio, but this one actually has equipment. Um, Nancy wants to know if they will be moving assistants um, for August 17th. So they are this, I believe, is that sorority if it is, then there's not. The 17th? It's a Saturday. Yes, there is moving assistance that day. The lead hogs will actually be helping move you in because they're the best. <laughs> and they come early to help you. Awesome. We have a limited number of dollies as well. Yes. Limited number. We recommend that if you do have a dolly or a mallet that you bring it with you. Um, we do have them available to check out. But it's with 400 people moving in over the course of a couple days, it's usually kind of hard to get your hands on them. So now we're going to head over to the laundry room, everyone's favorite subject. <laughs> um, but as we pass the laundry room, or get to the laundry room, we'll pass the front desk again. We'll pass another set of doors. Um, so these are double doors, just like the ones on the, the entrance that we came in. So you have to fall into the second one. Um, this leads up to the resident reserve parking lot. Um, it's the closest parking you have to your other people. Stop breaking up, you fucking so here we have a trash and recycling room. Um, so every floor will have like a trash chute and recycling bins, but that's like the main one. Um, and it's all on right there. And then head down here. Um, there is only one laundry room for this entire building and it's down here, but as you'll see, there's plenty of machines for everyone. So needless to say, very large. Um, so the great thing about laundry on the University of Arkansas campus is it's cleanless and cardless. Um, so it's already included in your tuition and fees. So you can just throw all your stuff in, um, leave it, and then you don't even have to worry about setting a timer because the University of Arkansas has an app, which is awesome. I used it all the time my freshman year. You just know that, say that you used machine 25 on the app, you'll know that it's machine 25, you'll hit track and your phone will get a push notification as soon as it's done. Um, so you don't have to worry about leaving it in there forever or forgetting about it or falling asleep watching Netflix and you don't have to sit down here But you totally can if you want to um, the only thing is you have to bring your own detergent and softener and all that fun stuff But things we would recommend you do bring a uh, stain remover like a shout um, Tide pods if you like liquid detergent that works well um, we don't uh, use the powdered detergent and we don't use bleach. Bleach is a huge issue. If someone uses bleach and the next person doesn't know, it can cause an issue. So don't bring, bring your bleach. <laughs> um, we have a couple questions. Tina wants to know if the band will have moving assistance on the 16th. Let me get back to you on that okay. in a second. Okay, and then William wants to know, are they allowed to bring their own printers? You are allowed to bring your own printer, but a lot of students bring them and they don't end up using them. They just use their printing quota mm -hmm. um, in the in the Fulbright Dining or near Fulbright Dining Hall or in the other labs. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you can definitely bring it. Yeah. And students get about 30 it's to 35 Yeah. It's a $35 semester. printing credit, which is 750 black and white pages. Um, that number is decreased if you do color or laminate or do something fancy with the printing, but it's 750 black and white. I've never run out of my printing yeah. quota. I've never. I, I, have. I, I mean, never. And I print all my online yeah, reading, so. Cool. Um, Stephanie wants to know if there's ever an issue with um, theft of laundry. I, uh, it depends on the year. We can't guarantee that next yeah. year we'll have an issue, but I, in my time last year, didn't have any issues with theft. Um, you are able to fill out a police report if you decide or if you think something is stolen. Typically what happens is someone thinks their stuff has been taken, but it's really just in another dryer, washer, or something like that. Um, we ran into that a few times, but hasn't. I have not seen an issue personally. Yeah, I never dealt with one my freshman year. The only thing is my roommate and I threw both of our stuff into one washer and I took her large t-shirt, she had my medium. But like, yeah, <laughs> we figured that out really easily. Yeah. Yeah. Not, I mean, with the app, it's really helpful. You remember which machine your stuff is in and I mean, no one's really stealing anything and that'd be awkward because then they do walk around in your clothes and you know that it's your clothes. <laughs> it's just important to be, if you're prompt, then you'll be, you'll be yeah. more likely to be good. Cool. And once somebody's actually folded someone else's laundry for them and left it there, so Aww. if not yeah. anything else, you know, yeah. Yeah. you just move it. And, and if a loose item gets left, typically we put it back on this back shelf here, and so if you're missing a sweatshirt or something, you could always leave there. Yeah. Cool. So, okay. We'll head up to a floor now. Head to the elevator. Yeah. Cool. These are just some more offices for cleaning staff and housing staff. The elevators can get a little crazy, um, so if you want to take the stairs, recommend it. Um, but if you're living on the ninth floor, 
probably wouldn't. <laughs> it's a lot of stairs to go up every day. Yes. That's right, yeah, nine floors up. Yes. Yeah. I lived on the fourth, so I took the stairs every day just because I challenged myself to not be lazy and not gain that first one <laughs> of 15. And it was only three floors, so it was fine. But some days I took the other. <laughs> Um, I don't think we mentioned the yeah, TVs either. So there's um, TVs on every elevator lobby for important information about programs, things to get involved in, um, important messages, things like that. to a common space. So every um, floor of Hawks has two different common spaces that are mirrored on either sides of the elevator. So the elevator is kind of like the midpoint of the floor and everything is mirrored. Um, so this is where a lot of the floor programming will happen with just like your floor. So whole building programming will be downstairs and floor programming will be up here. Um, so there's like this big common area right here and then there's a little nook on the other side. Um, yeah, it gives you a nice little view of the mountains. What would be an example of floor programming? Floor, floor programming? Oh gosh, we have a whole gamut of them. A lot of times, um, sometimes it's stress relief. You can have, you know, come do an activity to get away from your studying, or sometimes it's for educating on um, diversity and inclusion, or uh, maybe a academic success program where you're learning study tips from your peers or from your RA. It's just really whatever the students want to see. We try to gear our floor pro programs towards that. We love when residents plan things on their own too. To you know, let's. I had a student who was really passionate about. Um, calligraphy and bullet journaling and so she hosted a floor program on her floor we got her funding and she did that and she taught people how to bullet journal to calligraphy so we really love stuff like that we also have a lot of like video game parties a lot of movie parties on these floors and so it's really just whatever you want to make it um, Sydney had a question about the elevators she heard that on move-in day you're only allowed to ride the elevator up not down is that true that is correct yes okay. and it's mainly on the busy day so um, Saturday for sure um, depending on how busy it is the other days, we do have to, um, for safety and for capacity, we have to have it only go up. Okay, awesome. Can do the RA room too? Oh, yeah. So each residence hall floor will have two RAs. Um, so they each have their own rooms. They don't have a roommate. Um, it's just them in their room. They usually have pretty much an open door policy, and you'll know it's the RA room because they're decorated more heavily than everyone else. And there's a convenient sign. Um, so you'll have two per floor, one on each side essentially, um, and they're there for you 24/7, whatever you need. Um, they man those phones, the 24-hour phones, and I got really close to my RAs. I know not everyone does, but I did, so that was really cool. And then we'll head into the bathrooms. Um, so there's two sets of bathrooms. Again, elevator splits it. Um, so this is usually an all boys floor, I believe. Um, so yes. everyone that uses over here is all boys, but if there is a female visitor on the floor or a mom is here to help move in, um, there is a unisex bathroom that they can use, um, but everything else is in all males. Um, so in here, the sinks are all out um, and there's soaps and hand towels and all that fun stuff. And then these are what we would consider more spa style where you have a complete door and there's a toilet and a shower in here so you can have complete privacy and then, which is really nice. And then yeah. another time there is just toilets. So some are toilets and showers and some are just toilets. So if you just need to go to the bathroom, you don't have to take up a whole shower stall. Um, <laughs> but if you need to get ready, like 
These, this one's just a shower, so there's lots of different options. Um, I lived in community style my freshman year. I never waited on a shower. I never waited mm -hmm. on a bathroom. Yeah. That's awesome. And I'm a girl, and I went through sorority recruitment, and I <laughs> never waited, so I promise. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I promise it'll be okay. After, like, the first day, everyone kind of falls into their own schedule, and I was in class all Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but had Tuesday, Thursday off, so it would just kind of fall into your own schedule. Then we're gonna head to a study room. So this is a study room. They're on the ends of each hall, um, just one end. The other end is actually a room that we'll see in a little bit. So there's tables and chairs and outlets and everything, but the best part is there's a complete whiteboard wall. So it's clean right now because it's summer, but usually this is filled up with calculus and physics and Greek mythology and anything that you could possibly think of. Um, it's for you to use whenever, um, just probably erase after yourself so you can keep it open <laughs> to the next person. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just a study room. Every floor has one. What was one of your harder classes or the class that you remember the most from your freshman year? Um, I was involved in H2P or the Honors Humanities Project my freshman year, um, which is a three semesters course through Fulbright Honors College. And it's my favorite class I've ever taken. It actually made me change my major. But it was the most labor intensive class I've ever taken. Um, I was reading hundreds of pages a week. I was writing essays. I was studying vocab, studying terms I've never heard of and languages I've never heard of. That was definitely mine. I know we have a lot of paper writing parties in these study rooms. I was perched up on the window seals with my backs against the windows. Um, that was just kind of my favorite spot. But I know a lot of my friends that are at the engineering college really have not liked Calculus 3 oh, yeah. and Diffy Q and OCHEM. But as a history major, I don't take any of those classes. Um, Tina wants to know if expo markers are provided for the study rooms. I don't believe that. They're not. Okay. No, they're not. It's too inconsistent. We put them out, but it's going to disappear pretty quickly. So you might have some in the first couple of days, and then they'll be gone. So bring your own expo markers if you'd love to use those, because there's lots of whiteboards here. Awesome. You can get a colorful variety pack from Walmart, and you just know which variety is yours. <laughs> yeah, that's works. Okay. Check out a uh, corner room. And All right. So HOTS has mainly two types of rooms, a standard room and a corner room, but there is a special room on each mm -hmm. floor. Uh, it's like I said, the study room's on one side, and then on the other side, it's called the O8s, and they're the really big rooms. So it's basically the study room just with beds instead of tables. The ones with the rooms? Yeah, end rooms, okay. End rooms, yes, end rooms. Corner rooms. Um, so we do have recycling on this floor. Um, this is recycle only, uh, no trash. The trash chute is on the other side of the hallway, right above that trash room that I showed earlier. Um, but HOTS is really eco-friendly, um, so we like to recycle here. Just don't put any trash in this. <laughs> you actually see the door to the trash chute right here. So you can see that smaller door right there next to the RA room. That's where you just open up and you can put your trash down it. So don't ever put things like cardboard or like a Starbucks coffee that could explode everywhere because it just goes into the trash chute and causes a mess. So bag trash, or trash only, but you don't have to go to the first floor trash room to do that. So we're passing through the middle of the common room again, then another bathroom. So like I said, everything's mirrored. So if you're starting to think things look the same, it's because they do. <laughs> So we'll head into the 08 room. Um, so this is the converted in study room. Um, so where the whiteboard wall would be is just a white wall. Um, and it has the same exact furniture as any other standard room in HOTS. Um, it's just spread out a little bit bigger um, just because HOTS is in high demand. Everyone wants to live here. Um, so if you get one of these rooms, you're really lucky. Um, congratulations. I did not have one. <laughs> Um, but it has all the same stuff. You can kind of rearrange however you want, um, but the way it comes set up is that you each kind of have your own little nooks, and then you have tons of floor space to do whatever you want. Um, I've heard that it's gotten transformed into a media room one time with the Xboxes and all that jazz. Um, probably put a few times against the wall. Um, Ashton wants to know if we can measure the window in here. Okay, yeah. In fact, here's our new tape measure. Okay. You want to give it a go? Sure. Fancy tape measure. It's not a tape measure, it's just an electric measure. Hmm. Can I? Sure, go on. Hey guys, 
can get my arm back here. Which one are we trying to measure? Sure. The window. The window itself. Okay. Let's see then. Can you get back here and measure? I guess I guess from right there. Yeah, turn the back. Okay. Turn the back there. So you'll if you can see the line, you got it. It is 11 feet and 2 inches wide. Okay, and can we go ahead and get the height yeah. as well? Sure. You just put the base right there. Yep. And make sure it hits the ceiling. Yep. And that is 4 feet 8 inches. Sweet. So basically 11 feet by 4 feet 8 inches. We'll go ahead and give them the lip here too if you don't oh, mind. Okay. And I do have a conventional tape measure this too if that's okay. easier for that one. We'll get to it later. So yeah. 13 inches. 13 inches on the lip. Cool. Any other measurements in an OE? Um, maybe we can show them the inside of the oh, yeah. wardrobe. So these are standard in every room in HOT. Um, one of the doors will have a mirror on it, full length mirror. Um, and then inside you have two bars and then um, the shelves on the top and bottom. Um, the great thing about cots is that the ceilings are high and the armoires are short term, I guess you could say. They're not short by any means, but you can fit stuff on top of armoires. Like, that's where I kept all my laundry detergent, all my high heel shoes, my freshman year, so they weren't taking up space in the actual closet. Cool. Um, Madison wants to know if we can measure from the top of the window to the floor. Sure. Um, top of the window. Let's see. Probably for a curtain that she wants to make. Yeah, maybe from the ceiling to the floor. Yeah. Because okay. I would subtract about two inches if you're trying to get okay. that right there. Yeah. It's eight feet exactly from mm -hmm. the ceiling to the floor. Eight so. feet. So you would subtract then, let's see. About three inches. Okay, so right seven feet nine inches roughly around there. Um, Angel wants to know if we can measure the middle section of the wardrobe. The middle section. So, oh, yeah. so like right yeah, here. probably yeah. measurement questions. Yeah. Um, Kurt wants to know the dimensions of the wardrobe door. The door. Yes, yeah, maybe the outside. Maybe. I think I need the physical too. Okay. know if we can measure the inside of the dresser drawers. And then 
Tom wants to know if we can measure between the beds. So how much space is sure. right here? In this here? room, in a corner room? Because it will be a little bit different. Um, he, he just asked it, so okay. I'm assuming. Sure. Um, so maybe what, from right there? Five feet, seven inches for a corner room. Um, Tyler wants to know if the bed is lofted as high as it goes, how much room will be between the ceiling and the top of the mattress? So you'd want to consider that this right. is going to be up here, so it's like probably about five feet tall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Five feet seven inches. So about ten inches above that one. Okay. There. Three feet two inches minus ten minus ten, 10 inches. inches. So, well, I'm <laughs> <laughs> you can just we use know. the regular tape measure, and then we subtract how much? Uh, ten. Ten. Wow, this is this is bad. No, it's fine. We got this. Okay. I'm a history major, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so thirty-six. So twenty-six inches. Twenty-six inches, approximately. So just over two feet. Aaron wants to know if it's possible to get the beds raised prior to move in. Yes, they have to be requested by the end of the month um, through the fix it work order online. You can go to housing.uark.edu slash fix, fix it and then you can request to have your bed raised. Um, let's see, we have a couple more measurements. Okay. Could we um, measure the height of the middle section of the wardrobe? Um, she might have missed the first time we did it. Okay. It was three feet nine inches. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You have a good memory. No, this <laughs> tracks oh, okay. it. <laughs> three feet nine inches. Yes. Um, can we measure from the ceiling to the window ledge? Yeah. Five feet seven inches from the ceiling to the window ledge. And Kurt wants to know how high, high, how high off the ground is the bed right now? Right now. You want this? Yeah. Okay. Should I do the mattress included, do you think? Um, I would go from maybe the bottom of the mattress, the yeah. frame maybe. Okay. And maybe do it with the mattress too. I mean, it's up 10 inches, but okay. And if you like to sleep comfy, we recommend you bring a mattress topper. These are, like, they're comfy on their own, but if you like to really be comfy, bring a mattress topper. Mm -hmm. A standard topper. These are um, extra long beds, but a normal standard mattress topper will work just fine. Um, yeah. Okay, I think we're good. Right. We'll, we'll look at the uh, regular? Yeah, we'll head into the standard room. So this is the corner room, so it's slightly, slightly bigger. Is there anything you definitely recommend as something they should bring? Uh, mattress toppers. Mattress yeah. toppers. Yeah. Shower yeah. shoes. I've heard that's a good one. Uh, yeah, just cheap flip flops. Old Navy always has like a dollar flip flop day. Um, that's always a good place to get it. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I really like my extension cords because I just like command strip them to my bed frame or the wall or something to keep my cords in place. Maybe a TV too. I, I didn't bring a TV because Netflix on my laptop, but um, plenty of my guy friends brought TVs to hook up their gaming consoles to. Um, or if we wanted a movie night, we either went downstairs to the movie room or we hung out in their room. Um, so TV is not super necessary, but if it's something that you're passionate about, definitely bring it. Um, I brought a Keurig. That saved me a couple mornings for my 8 a.m. classes. Um, I had a, mirror, a Keurig, a microwave, and a refrigerator. But if you don't want to bring your own, you can rent them through housing. Uh, the fridge and the microwave, not the Keurig. Um, but you can rent those, and they will be in your room when you move in. And, and you can have one fridge per room, and it needs to be one of the smaller ones. The exact cubic size of it is in the housing handbook. If you have any questions about what to bring, what not to bring, um, anything about the residence hall, you can always just Google the residence, the UARC residence hall handbook, and they will, you can find everything in there. Another thing she mentioned that's important to know is the, um, how to hang things. So command hooks is what we recommend. Um, don't bring nails, don't bring tacks, things like that. 
Um, but when you take them off the walls, be very, very careful because the paint on the walls does chip easily. Mm -hmm. And so um, we ask, and you're responsible for any damage that is done to the walls. And so make sure you peel those off very, very carefully. I didn't have any damages in my room when I moved out, so it's possible. Yes, it is <laughs> possible if you are if you're careful yeah. and not careless. Is blue tape still a thing? Yes. Okay. And blue tape. We love. You will see lots of this blue tape here. The blue painters tape. It works well and it doesn't damage anything. Stephanie wants to know how many outlets are in each room. That's a good question. There's two over there. Two. I know there's somewhat behind each bed. I can't really see quite back there. There's one over here. Okay. So yeah, one, two, three, four. Is there some behind the bed? I think so. Let's see. Yeah. I think there should be. I can't imagine. Um, fun fact, while we're moving this, you can lock these drawers if you bring a lock. Oh, well, there is that you see one? outlet through the, that says on through the furniture side. That there, yeah. There yep, is. there's one more back there. So there's two per side. Two per side. Um, you're allowed to bring the um, extension cords with the multiple plugs if it has a surge protector on it. So those typical standard ones with the little on-off button. Mm -hmm. I have those ones. Yeah. Well, um, there's also back here a cable hookup. So every room has Cox cable. This is probably one of the only times that our generation will have cable is nice. in, these, in these rooms. Um, but there's a hookup for it. So if you have a TV, you can watch The Bachelorette on Monday night at the right time. Um, nice. Watch your... Football games? I don't know about NFL <laughs> Network. Sorry, guys. Yeah. The TV lobbies downstairs do have NFL Network, so a lot of times there's football watch parties down there. Yeah. And just in the realm of talking about cable, mm -hmm. also the entire building has Wi-Fi oh, yeah. through it, so yeah, you'll be able to access your Wi-Fi through your room anywhere in the building, basically. Also, each room has its own temperature control, so you're only fighting your roommate about how cold it is and not the whole hall. That one's up there. Um, some of them are in different places throughout the room, but you do have your own temperature control. William wants to know what room numbers were the corner rooms and the longer rooms that we showed earlier? So it's the big long rooms are the 08, so 408, 608. So anything in 08, those are the really big study rooms. Um, the corner room, oh, the 409, and then I have to get the other one, run down there and grab the other numbers. Um, so the corner room is 409, um, and, then, later. Yeah, yeah. and then we can check on the other corner rooms later, um, but 409 definitely for yeah. side. So 09s, 08s and no 09s. Nancy wants to know if there's towel bars in the rooms. Yes. Yes. They're so. behind the doors. Yeah. Perfect. And then for safety, there's um, smoke detectors or technically par particle detectors in each room. So it detects carbon monoxide, um, smoke, things like that. So um, each room has one of those for safety. Sydney yeah. wants to know how well the AC works in the it, rooms. It, it works. Um, <laughs> my roommate froze me out freshman year a couple times, and I froze her out too a couple times. But um, I think it gets up to either 68 or 69, and it's like a chilly 68 and 69. The thing that um, you do want to consider is the building is on a two-pipe system, and so that means that we can only run heat or only run cooling. We cannot run both at one time, and so during the summer we run cooling, and then there's a season um, in the fall when we have to switch to heat, mm -hmm. and so during that season of time it does get warm in the rooms. Um, we do our best to make sure that it's a short season, but just due to the building and the way it's made, yeah. um, that will be a time where it gets a little warm. A place. lot of people brought those like clip-on fans and, and like yeah. clip them to their headboards right or their yeah. sounds right here. Um, and then some people had box fans, but yeah, I go to clip-on fans are mm -hmm. probably the most popular because yes. they're just right in your face. So. Yeah. Um, Kimber wants to know if there's a vacuum available for students. If not, how do they clean the floor? Yes, there's vacuum, brooms, and dust pans available at the front desk. You can go check those out during desk hours. Most people I knew, who, or in my roommate and I included, we had a slipper um, that we kept since these floors are um, not carpet. Um, mm -hmm. So we just kind of kept it in the corner and used it every once in a while. Sydney wants to know if um, they can open the windows? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Do we I think she was asking if it's, oh, it's an option. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but yes, you can't open the <laughs> Um, We had another question about a measurement in the 08 room. Do you think we could go back yeah. in there? Brittany wants to know how much space is in between the bed and the window. Okay. Yep. You want this one?
maybe we mentioned uh, cable as well. We yeah, we, we did, yeah. Okay, so between the bed? Between the bed and the window. So maybe that little yeah. cubby. It's a foot. Exactly a foot. Exactly a foot. That's convenient. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all the questions we have right now. If you guys have any more questions, um, this will be the last call yeah. for questions. Well, We're prepared. I'm trying to think of anything we didn't go over. We got cable, we got Wi-Fi. Got um, you can see Small Mart from here. We're super close. If you need like shampoo, you need to, whatever you need, you just need something to drink, Small Mart's right there. It's like you could probably walk there in three minutes. Can you see it from here? Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. behind, it's behind the trees, but um, so that's the Garland parking garage, and it's in the bottom of the Garland parking garage. Sweet. Um, we're not getting any more questions, so we might be able, ready to sign off. Yeah. Well, we're really excited to see everyone soon. Um, parents and students, we're really excited to see you, and it's going to be coming up soon. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in with us, and if you have any more questions or want to know about any other residence halls that are coming up, um, movein.uark.edu has all that information. Um, and she said like earlier, there's a housing handbook that has a lot of the frequently asked questions in it. Um, and I'm sure social media, email, best way to reach us. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thanks.